like I said, I'm not going to be jumping back in the ring anytime soon. It doesn't mean that Social Gloves won't have another event. We will be having another one. Yeah, little word of advice, Austin. Events just ain't for you. Now, as we all know by now, that isn't exactly a hot take. I mean, we've all seen how Os McBroom events have ran in the past. I mean, his first boxing event was such a big failure that he ended up not being able to pay any of the fighters or the staff to which he got sued for, and also lied about the pay-per-view numbers that the event was gonna get to which he got sued for. Then he held the Ace Fest, which he explained would be Disneyland meets Coachella, which just turned out to be your standard town fair. And just like with most things Os McBroom does, no one really give a fuck and no one turned up. And then we got to Osmo Broom's second boxing event, Social Gloves 2. And the first thing you would notice when he was promoting this event is that the fight card was nowhere near as stacked as what the first fight card was. Instead of the card being stacked with a bunch of YouTubers and TikTokers that were very popular, it was now just filled with a lot of people that no one had really heard of. And because of this, yet again, no one turned up. In fact, this was probably the most embarrassing showing for an Osmo Broom event yet. And he put it in a bastard stadium. Like, this guy's a moron, isn't he? Like, no one turns up to his events, so he decided for his new event, he's gonna up the capacity. Stupid. But even though barely anyone turned up to the event, at least Osmo Broom came away from the event without a lawsuit. I mean, that would be an accomplishment in itself. But I mean, you aren't stupid, right? You've seen the title. You know I'm making a video on the event, so let's be honest. We all know there was a lawsuit, wasn't there? And I got told about this on my Instagram DMs, but I couldn't find the documents anywhere. I got sent a bunch of like screenshots and whatnot, but I needed to see the official documents if I was gonna make a video on this, and I eventually found them. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so, because I had to go through the painful efforts of searching Osmo Broom on every fucking website possible. Right, so we've got the actual lawsuit here. As you can see, the people being sued are Austin McBroom and Alan McBroom, which is Osmo Broom's dad, who was a, a very strange block. I mean, even if we're not bearing in mind the rumours that have been spewed by a lot of people that know Austin personally, you know, about Austin and his dad having threesomes with girls, which is already enough of a reason for me to think you're a fucking freak. But Austin's dad seems to be involved with pretty much every event that Austin does. He was in the middle of the Ace Fest giving his big speech about how they've proven the haters wrong and that the event was such a big success. So he's basically Austin's, like, right-hand man, you know, and also his, like, sexual activity partner, if you want to say that, which kind of knocks me a bit sick. But the person suing Austin Allen is someone by the name of Ted Foxman, who actually put money into the Social Gloves 2 event, which already, a bit of an error on your part. Like, have you not seen enough proof that putting any money into anything Austin McBroom does is a bad idea? Like, I would put my house on the fact that if you put some money into an Austin McBroom event, it will probably end up in you suing Austin afterwards, okay? It's just blatantly obvious. So as we can see here, it details the fact that Alan McBroom is involved in this lawsuit because he helped handle Austin McBroom's business dealings with Foxman. And then it goes on to point out that the first Social Gloves event, Battle Off the Platforms, YouTubers versus TikTokers, was a big failure. And it even says here that the event underperformed, resulting in a financial shortfall and multiple civil actions involving Osmo Broom and or SGP and unpaid or underpaid fighters. SGP being Osmo Broom's production company, if you see that pop up again. And then the lawsuit goes on to explain that Foxman was kind of brought in to help Osmo Broom pay the fighters and the staff who weren't paid in the first event. In order to both ensure fighter participation at the event, as well as to generate positive press for the event, the parties, Foxman and Osmo Broom, have agreed to endeavour to finalise, fund the agreements to settle slash resolve the remaining fighter claims, stemming from the Battle of the Platforms event. Investor Foxman agrees to invest up to two and a half million dollars in connection with the event. The investment shall cover, among other things, the amounts needed to settle the remaining fighter claims. Osmo Broom shall, among other things, fight at the event for no charge and use best efforts to promote the event. So as you can see, Austin basically made this deal with Foxman, saying that if you can help me out financially in paying the previous fighters up to two and a half million dollars, I will fight at the next event for no charge, I'll do it for free, which is interesting, we'll get into that in a second, but he will fight at the event for free to make sure that they can get enough profits out the event so Foxman basically gets his money back and they can do future events where Austin will get paid and they'll make a bunch of money. That's the plan, right? But the reason why that is interesting, because if you remember, I actually made a video 
talking about how the fighter pairs for the second event actually got leaked. And in the leaked earnings, it said Osma Broom was earning like $5,000 or $10,000 or something really small. And now we know the reason why. And I did say in that video, I believe it will probably be because Austin's relying on the pay-per-view buys. But it turns out it was actually so he could try and recoup some money that he lost on the first event, which obviously does make sense. Now, this bit is actually quite important because it says Investor Foxman shall have the right to terminate this agreement within 30 days of the April 14, 2022 effective date without liability. So the agreement says if Foxman wants to, he can terminate the contract within 30 days of this date and he'll have no liability for it, okay? Which, as you can imagine by the fact that I'm pointing that out, that happened. On April 18th, 2022, Foxman wired $49,500 to help settle the remaining fighter claims. That same day, Foxman texted Alan McBroom that Foxman sent Foxman's bank the wire info and asked, I assume if the fight goes forward with the other investors, I'll get reimbursed. Alan McBroom responded to Foxman by text saying, yes, you will get reimbursed. Foxley timely terminated the agreement in an email to Alan McBroom, subject, exercising my option to get out of the show. I've decided to step away from the show and exercise my option to get out of our deal. We can discuss the repayment of the 50k I have already advanced. I'm fine with the sooner of either getting repaid when your new investors come in, or the next four to six months if the show doesn't happen. So as you can see, Foxman decided he no longer wanted to be involved in the event, which first of all, very wise decision. And he's basically asking Osama Broom's dad, when will he get his money back? He also gives reasons as to why he dropped out of the event in a text to Alan Broom saying, the progress we've made is showing everything going in the wrong direction. Every fighter is 50 to 75% over the budget. The fighters that were shown to me are mostly eliminated from being possible without going even further over budget. Which is also interesting because if you do remember, the fight card that was originally promoted for Social Gloves 2 wasn't all that bad. It still wasn't as good as the first card but it had some names you would recognize and then then people just start dropping out and dropping out and all of a sudden we had people that no one knew i spoke to osmo broom and he told me that you guys have secured two million dollars in funding for the fight so it appears that effing is moving forward let me know when i can expect to receive the return of the 50k i sent at the start of our efforts which by the way what dumb fuck decided to invest two million dollars into this event because i'm no like professional when it comes to this shit but I can almost guarantee he didn't get his money back. But this is where we get into Osmo Broom's standard way of dealing with things like this, because it goes on to say, on July 8th, 2022, Osmo Broom's attorney replied by email to Foxman that Osmo Broom did not owe Foxman any amount. I mean, classic Osmo Broom, isn't it? So you're telling me that when Osmo Broom owes people money, he doesn't give them the money? Fucking hell, it's news to me. But then after Osma Broom said that he wasn't going to pay any amount of Foxman, Alan McBroom, Austin's dad, replied to Foxman saying, you're going to have to wait on your 50k advance until after the event. We're still in the process of securing our investment and funding the event as first priority. We're literally 22 days out from the event. I promise you will get paid back the advance on that following Monday, August 1st. You can disregard the July 8th, 2022 letter from Osmond Broom's attorney and we will work this out. No hard feelings, brother. What do you mean no hard feelings? You're going against an original contract in which you were supposed to return the money if you terminated the contract. You can't just now turn around and say no hard feelings, brother. Also, can we just point out the fact that we're literally 22 days out from the event and we're still working on securing an investment for the event. Like, how badly do they organize these things? So Foxman said, okay, right, I'll wait a little bit longer for the funds and five weeks extra to be exact, to which he then responded to Osmo Broom saying this. You asked for time to pay back until after the show. I've now allowed another five weeks to pass, so I'm asking for the funds now. None of Osmo Broom, Osmo Broom's counsel, or Alan McBroom responded. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but it's almost like, have you not learned your fucking lesson yet? How many lawsuits do you need to go through before you realize, you know what, these aren't all that fun, are they? It's a bit of a stress. I should probably just sort this out before it goes to court again. Then the lawsuit goes on to explain that Foxman reached out a bunch more times and he just never got a response, which yet again, isn't exactly the biggest shock in the world, is it? And then the lawsuit goes on to show the ways that Austin lied to Foxman about what this event was going to entail. And one of them things was actually the fight card. So the fight card was supposed to be Osmond Broom versus Gibb, which did happen. Nick Young versus Lee Vion Bell. Blueface versus John Gabbana. Bryce Hall versus Alex Wasabi, which just 
didn't happen. I didn't even hear about that. DDG versus Tutti. Um, I know who DDG is, but he definitely wasn't on the event either. And he also shows the amounts that each fighter was supposed to get paid. So we've got Gib here getting quarter of a million dollars, Nick 200k, Bella 150k, so on and so on. Basically, the total fighter pay was going to be 1.3 million dollars. But then it goes on to show what they actually got paid. So remember the numbers that were promised to Foxman for his investment? These are the actual numbers. Gib got 350k when the budget was 200 Nick got 250k when his budget was 200. Bella is 250k minimum, his budget was 150. Blueface is 250, his budget was 150. Tank is $250,000, but that wasn't even part of the original, like, fire card. Also, I would love to know who Tank is, because surely we're not talking about, like, Tank as in... Javonte Davis. Like, who the fuck else is Tank? But yeah, as it says here, them three fights just in themselves is $1.35 million, and the total fighter budget was $1.4 million. So of course Foxman's gonna want to get out of the deal. He's been promised a certain card and a certain budget to which he's then put a lot of money into, or was going to put a lot of money into, and then it's just been flipped upside down. He's just been fully lied to. And this is what Osman Broom and the Ace family does over and over again. Like, we've got Social Gloves 1, full of lies. The Ears Fest, full of lies. This event, full of lies. Even with Catherine McBroom and her skincare product, full of lies. They are some of the most shady people I have ever seen on this platform, and they continuously do it over and over again, but then try and have this really, like, cute family channel persona. It's a load of shite. And then we get some more interesting information, because as I mentioned earlier, Foxman was kind of brought in to not only fund the new event, but also help reimburse some of the fighters who fought on the first card who didn't get paid. So as we can see here, Fizz Jarvis was supposed to get paid a million dollars for his fight. He only got paid 200k. Vinny Hacker was supposed to get 500k, got 100k. Michael Lee was supposed to get 400k, got 80k. DDG was supposed to get 300k, got 60k. Ryland Storm was supposed to get 250k, got pretty much 50k. So they only ended up paying out $489,000 for the people who didn't get paid, when Fizz Jarvis and himself was already supposed to get double that. We also have some more information of how much the event is even going to cost in the first place. As you can see here, it says Crypto Arena Staples Center is $250,000 to rent. The fighter repayments for the first event we've just spoke about was about $500,000, and the production cost was $300,000. So just from this sheet alone, we can see that the fighters on the second card is $1.4 Crypto Arena, 250k. Remain and Fighter Claims, 500k. Production cost, 300k. A ridiculous amount of money. $2,439,500 to be exact, and I definitely didn't have to use a calculator for that. I'm just really good at maths. But let's just bear in mind that 2.4 million because the second event happened. And if I had a guess, I reckon it probably got no more than 50,000 pay-per-view buys and it could be a lot less. The first event got about 120,000 pay-per-view buys and had a lot bigger people on it, okay? And no one really give a shit about this second event. So if the event did get 50,000 pay-per-view buys and it was valued at $25 a buy, it's about just over $1.2 million. It's also been reported that 2,000 people went to the event to watch it in person, and even though a lot of people were reportedly there for free, in fact, a lot of people were reportedly there for free, let's just say there was 2,000 people there for a ticket price of $100, 200k, it's still nowhere near the amount needed to pay for this event, and as we mentioned earlier, apparently they got enough for investor in for $2 million, so he's got nowhere near his amount of money back, so don't be surprised if there is another lawsuit. A much bigger lawsuit by the people who did invest the $2 million and didn't get their return from the event. It's it's probably coming realistically. But either way, that has been Osma Broom's shady business dealings and the lawsuit he is now currently in. It's like number five of lawsuits that I've reported on Osma Broom, which I've got to say, it's very impressive. I just haven't seen someone who can make so many financial mistakes in such a short period of time. Like, it's really something to behold. But either way, let me know your thoughts on everything we spoke about in today's video. If you did enjoy the video, please do a like down below. Subscribe if you are new. If you could support the sponsor as well, that would be bloody lovely. And until the next one, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, goodbye.